Hello, David here, and the project for today is repairing this wall clock. This is a battery-operated wall clock, and uh, no, I'm not going to tear into the guts or anything. I'm just going to replace the movement. We've had this clock for 40 years, and they don't make them anymore, and I thought it would be easy to replace the movement. They cost about 9 or $10, and uh, we really like the clock because between the clock and the carpet, it really ties the room together. That rug really tied the room together, did it not? Start by taking the hands off. I should just pull right off. Easy to say, huh? Okay. There's a minute hand. Power hand. Pulls right off. Save them. You may want to reuse them. I don't know if there's a standard size for these, but... They're always different sizes. Usually the minute hand has a smaller diameter hole and the hour hand has a larger diameter hole. Then we'll run this nut off. It's not held on with much force. And flip it over and the movement comes out got a hanging hook too so you can hang it on the wall. So you want to measure the size of this unit to make sure that the replacement unit is about the same size because it's got to fit in a hole of this diameter so it could be no larger than this diameter so any size up to this diameter ought to be fine and these are available everywhere. Make sure you get a stud that has the right depth so that it goes through to the face of the clock. So all those measurements are required. Also, when you're looking for a replacement unit, you have to measure the hour hand and minute hand to make sure that it fits the face of the clock. Because you don't want them too short and you don't want them too long. So I'm sure if you have something that is too long, you could cut them down. But if they're too short, you can't stretch them. While you're measuring everything, I recommend taking measurements and inches and millimeters metric because I noticed online that some products are only giving inch measurements and some products are only giving metric measurements. It's looking like the clock hands are measured from the center of the hole to the end. So rather than uh, a five and a quarter dimension, this would be four and one quarter dimension or 133 millimeters whoops from the hole it's 107 millimeters parts just came in ordered them from Amazon not a sponsor the first I've seen them. A selection of hands. You know, you, those are thin. You could bend them easily by trying to rip them out of there. This kit has two clock movements. Some hardware. Aha, uh -huh. instructions. Should I read them? I think I better. Anyway, here's the old clock compared to the new clock. It's definitely going to fit. And I'm looking at the, the depth of the stem. That should be fine. This mounting bracket is different.
Put the mounting bracket in there. Actually, it does stand proud of the back of the clock. So, I think I should be fine because I was wondering if I needed to use the old mount, but I'll try it with the new mount first. I decided to use this set of hands mainly because the size and the shape match the old hands and they're very thin aluminum so you have to be really careful that you don't bend them and if you do bend them they're pretty easy to get back into shape but they do have a plastic sheet on over them to protect them so you gotta peel that off like that here's the hardware package comes with a wall hook. Never seen a wall hook like that. I think I'm just going to use the nail that I have in my wall. Rubber washer. A nut and a metal washer. Here's the build sequence. Take the clock. The hanger shaft or the uh, hanger hook goes over the clock. Next comes the rubber washer. And it goes through the clock face like that. I'm going to kind of do it with the battery side down on the bottom because that's heavier. Let gravity uh, do its work. Push the shaft through. Put on the metal washer. Put on the nut. Do not use a wrench. Just do it hand tight. The clock's made out of plastic and if you wrench it too tight it's going to break the clock. Make sure it's straight in the back. Okay, let's put the hands on. Make sure it's flat. Press it on so that you don't bend it. Then the hand comes next. Doing them all on the 12 o'clock because I want to make sure that they're parallel. They don't interrupt one another. I think that's going to be fine. Second hand. And this thing is really fragile. Instructions say not to set the time by turning the hands. You have to use this adjusting wheel on the back. The instructions also say to use a carbon pile battery. I don't have one. All I have is alkaline. But I'm dying to try it. 
Okay, positive goes to the right. Yeah, success. I'll check it in a couple hours after I set the time, see if it keeps time. It's been two hours and the clock is keeping perfect time, and that's a good thing because there's no time adjustment on the motor. It's just, it is what it is. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more great video content. Bye now.